Welcome to the Intimate Marriage Podcast, where I teach educated, successful couples how to have incredible, passionate relationships so that you can stop compromising and start feeling fully alive in your relationship. I'm your host, Alexandra Stockwell, aka The Intimacy Doctor. I'm a physician and an intimate marriage expert. My husband and I have been married for 26 years. We have four children and full professional lives, and we've created an amazing relationship. I've shown hundreds of couples how to do so as well. So if you want to deepen your understanding of your own relationship and learn to access new heights of emotional, sensual, and erotic intimacy, you're in the right place. I will show you how. So let's dive in. Stop believing the lies. If you're having difficulty in your relationship, most likely you are believing one of the lies, which is so prominent. In fact, people just take it as de facto truth. And it's not. It's a lie that we've been led to believe. Sometimes it's actually easier to believe the lies than to face the truth. So let's hear what they are. Well, first of all, If you're having a challenging time in your relationship, or maybe things are pretty good, but you're not feeling the sexual chemistry that you really want to feel, you don't feel the desire to touch and be touched that you want to be feeling, very often, and I'm curious if this applies to you, but very often, That's when someone believes they've married the wrong person. If you just married a woman who was more responsive, if you've just married a man who's a better lover, whose tone of voice doesn't irritate you, well, then everything would be so much better and you would not be facing the challenge you're facing. All right. In all reality, sometimes yes. It's an issue that it's the wrong person, but so much more often, it's not that you married the wrong person. It's that the two of you haven't learned how to be with one another, something which, by the way, is a learnable skill. And it's just not possible that you would have both been born knowing exactly how to be with one another in every phase of your relationship. No, no, no. It's something to learn, something to get really honest about, to look at what isn't working for you. What are your desires? How can you ask so that it's easy or easier to give you what you want? Because if you're just asking for it in a way that has your partner feel attacked or inadequate, It's just going to reinforce your sense that you married the wrong person. And that's just not what is going on a lot of the time. Okay, so now let's move on to the second lie. This one can be so sneaky, so tricky. It basically comes out of treating your relationship as commerce, as something transactional. So the what you might have in your mind is the idea that, well, if you give your spouse what they want, then they will give you what you want. And this can take some really crazy expressions. I was coaching a couple about four years ago, and he seemed to be the ideal husband He went above and beyond. He made her coffee and brought it to her in bed every day. Like, whatever she wanted, in fact, whatever she didn't even know what she wanted, but then he would give it to her and she'd realize, oh, yeah, this is exactly what I wanted. In fact, once he told her to just put on a nice dress and some heels, and that was all he said, and he showed up with roses and he took her to this restaurant that she'd been really wanting to go to but she hadn't even said anything 
but he had paid such close attention to her desires and her preferences that as soon as he heard about the restaurant, he knew she would love to go and made a point of making reservations. When their cat was sick and just didn't control its bowels and so things were pretty messy, she barely noticed that the mess needed to be cleaned up, but he got up out of his chair and was cleaning it. Like The way I'm describing him, he sounds like some massive submissive. That wasn't true. This is someone who actually was a very successful entrepreneur. He had a startup selling selling products for luxury cars. But when he was present with his wife, he really showed up above and beyond what she'd ever imagined anyone would do for her. And so she thought of him as this really incredible, nice man. And so did all of her friends who wished that their husbands would show up in this way. Anyway, I was coaching the two of them And I had a session just with him. And he basically told me that as a result of some of the writing prompts I'd given him and the coaching work we were doing together, that he realized that what had motivated him all these years of being such an incredible husband is that He didn't realize it, but he was telling himself that the more he did for her, the more likely it would be that she would give him what he wanted. But he never said what it was. He didn't even realize he was doing this. It was an unconscious way of behaving. And he was kind of astonished to realize that both he and she had thought that he was just so generous, so attentive, so amazing. And in fact, what he was, was transactional. Tit for tat, he was giving her so much in the hopes that she would give him the kind of attention he wanted. But it was never spoken. And she was very grateful for what he was doing for her. But it definitely didn't inspire her to do anything differently. She was still being the good kind of wife that she had been all along and wasn't going above and beyond and wasn't changing her tone of voice and wasn't available for sex more often or any of the things that he was yearning for. So this episode is sponsored by the Aligned and Hot Marriage Program my signature program designed for busy, educated couples who want to experience more closeness, more connection, and more passion. Go to theintimatemarriage.com for all the juicy details. If you think about it, you may find that you also sometimes do things in order to get your partner to do something. And I mean, maybe it works a little bit in the short term, but it is really based on a lie because relationships are not about fairness and parity in this way. Before I say more about that, I just want to tell you, I'm reminded there was a study looking at... um, They interviewed women about whether or not they'd ever had sex in order to get their husbands to do something. And in this study, I don't remember the number exactly, but it was up near 80%, maybe it was 79% or 82% of the women interviewed said that they had used sex to get their husbands to help with household chores. Now, The way that I talk about sex, it is definitely not for the purpose of household chores. It is for the purpose of expansion and erotic experiences and something that is beautiful and blissful and passionate for its own right. But if the two of you don't know how to really make the best use of sex 
namely for pleasure and erotic communion, then yeah, people use it as a tool to help get the household chores done in a way that is commerce, transactional, like I'm talking about. But in a great relationship, there isn't commerce, there isn't parity for so many different reasons, but the most important one that I'm going to mention right now is that people have different needs. I like talking more than my husband does. If we set up our relationship so that we each spoke and we each listened an equal amount of time, it would be so frustrating for both of us. In fact, when I tell my stories and the things that I'm thinking about and what's on my heart, we both enjoy that. And when he tells, we both enjoy that as well. But it's not equal. And it is very fulfilling. So think about what are the things that you do that if you let go of any transactional attitude, would you still do them? Are you doing them because it feels good to make your partner happy? Are you doing them because you enjoy doing them? Are you doing them because you know one of you needs to get it done and so why not have it be you? Or are you doing things Because you think the more you do, the more likely it is that your partner will notice you and give you what you want. Because if that's the case, stop believing that lie. No one is motivated in that way. Okay, so stop believing the lies. The first one is that you married the wrong person. There is so much that you can do to up-level and enhance your relationship with that very person. Stop believing lie number two. If you do more for your partner, they will do more for you. It just doesn't work that way. And number three, stop compromising. Far and away, the most common relationship advice that is given is that you need to learn to compromise. If you want a great marriage, compromise is the name of the game. Well, as I've said before, if what you want is a bland, pleasant companionship, then by all means, compromise to your heart's content because you can have a nice, bland companionship using compromise as one of the ways that you make your life work, as one of the ways that you avoid conflict and keep things moving forward. But if what you want is a delicious, passionate, emotionally intimate, erotically vibrant marriage, compromise will never deliver for you. No, instead, you've got to go for uncompromising intimacy. What do I mean by that? Well, when you compromise, you basically are holding back on what you want, on what your experience is, on what you know, in order to have your partner be more comfortable. Well, when you are uncompromising, You don't do that. It doesn't mean you always get your own way. It doesn't mean that you are exacting and demanding your partner doesn't have a voice. No, 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 no. Uncompromising in the context of intimacy means that you bring all of who you are, your desires, your emotions, your thoughts, your feelings, your lived experience, and you bring that to the relationship. Now, I don't mean that you bring every single thing you think or feel, but if there's anything that you're avoiding because you think it will be uncomfortable from your, for your partner, that's compromise. And being uncompromising means learning how to bring it in a way that serves both of you 
each of you and your relationship. In fact, that's what this whole podcast is about, is teaching you how to bring more of yourself to your relationship, how to be more authentic, more uncompromising in intimacy, more self-expressed, self-accepting, and so much more generous in making it safe for your partner to bring themselves as well. So in this episode, I really wanted to address the most common lies and to beg you to stop believing them. Yes, it is possible that you've married the wrong person for the rest of your life. Wasn't the wrong person for when you did it, but was the wrong person now. That is possible. But so many people draw that conclusion when it just is not true. The issue is that it's time for you both to change. In fact, if my husband were currently the man that I married, I would conclude that I'd married the wrong person as well. And if he were, at the time of our marriage 26 years ago, the man he is now, I would have also concluded I was marrying the wrong person because he's grown and developed and I've grown and developed. And so the version of him when we got married was the right version of him for then. And the version of him now is definitely the right version of him for me now. And if you're with a partner and the version of him that's available or the version of her that's available now feels like it's the wrong version It doesn't mean it's the wrong person. It just means it's time to grow and learn and become much more able to be with one another in a way that genuinely serves your relationship. And if you think that you just need to be a better and better spouse and that's going to make your partner give you what you want, it just rarely works that way. So stop believing that lie and certainly stop believing the lie about compromise as a way to create a really fantastic marriage. And if you want to know how to, well, keep on listening because season two is all about how to create a magnificent, intimate, passionate, dynamic marriage so that you and your spouse can have a vibrant, gloriously connected, collaborative life together. If you enjoyed this episode of the Intimate Marriage Podcast, share it with someone who also wants more joy and more pleasure in their marriage. Be sure to leave a rating and a review as that helps to spread my message. And if you're ready to deepen your relationship, and create a truly intimate, delicious, and vibrant marriage. Head over to theintimatemarriagepodcast.com to get started. Thank you for joining me on this episode. See you next time.